Reef netting is the most ancient net fishery still being practiced in the U.S. today. In Puget Sound, Native Americans and later Europeans reef netted off of Lummi Island, Point Roberts, and many of the San Juan Islands. Fish traps, owned by canneries and packing houses, replaced reef nets in traditional areas in the 1900s. Wherever schools of salmon naturally concentrate, both reef nets and fish traps can intercept them in somewhat the same way. Fish traps are passive gears which lead fish through a labyrinth, ending in a massive holding pin from which accumulated fish are brailed. Their inexorable efficiency promoted wasteful practices, and they eventually threatened to destroy the runs. So much rancor developed against the corporately owned traps in the 1930s that they were eventually banned by initiative in 1935. Almost immediately, reef nets began to replace them. Reef nets also lead salmon into a trap, but in a very democratic way that allows plenty of opportunity for escape. Reef netting is a surprisingly complex fishery that has changed very little in the last hundred years. Plastic ribbons have replaced grass, but battery-powered winches and polarized sunglasses have been the major breakthroughs. Sonar is used to varying degrees of success on rainy days, which occur only infrequently during July and August. Two narrow 40-foot barges are anchored in rows of tightly controlled sites. An artificial reef is stretched in front of them, made from thin lines and plastic ribbons, forming a funnel which guides the fish over a shallow net hung between the barges. The net drops down and billows out in such a way so as to be barely visible to the salmon. When a school makes its way over the head rope at the front of the net, the man standing in the tower above the head activates the head winch. His partner on the other boat, called the inside boat, activates his winch as well. If executed correctly, the fish are trapped inside the net. Because the net is a rectangle, the sides near the boat remain open, and some fish may escape until the edges, or rim lines, are pulled up. The school is then trapped in the bunt, or back of the net, and gathered toward one boat, the outside boat, and spilled into a waiting live well, where the fish will remain alive until processed. The net is then hurriedly put back down into the water in the hopes that another school of salmon may be waiting out in front. Reef netting works only on an incoming tide in the daylight hours, which allows for careful examination of the fish as they come into the boat. Unwanted or threatened stocks are easily separated from their peers and released unharmed to continue on their way. Almost all of the salmon caught in reef nets are bound for tributaries of the Fraser River in Canada. They are high in beneficial omega-3 oils and are in prime condition Seconds after being caught, they are spilled into seawater pens, where they wait to be processed. At the end of the day, they are bled in seawater and iced into totes, then sent to market immediately. All of these factors, no unwanted bycatch, prime quality fish bled in seawater, and then handling with the reverence these remarkable fish deserve, work together to make reef net salmon the finest quality salmon available in the world.